One of the things I recognize with most people, particularly when we're trying to solve problems, is that the masses do not know history. No. And they don't know history and law goes together. Keep that in mind. Like your left leg and your right leg, history and jurisprudence, which is the superior category of law, go together. The disadvantage that we have as a people is that those principles have deliberately been held back from people of Asiatic African descent for control purposes. Do not get preoccupied pointing your finger at the European even though he has an agenda, for it is many of your own who have been working with them to enslave you. And we understand that slavery is used connotatively, because it actually deals with the Slovakians. It's really an identity. And so when it's used from an identity perspective, if you're seeking remedy, understand that you're declared incompetent. Are we clear? So you were bound in free men. The other issue, and I would like to see another picture up there, Obama coming through the double doors representing the higher self and the lower self with Michelle wearing a red dress with the Moorish flag to the left. That's after he had also made the declarations to the committees and to representatives of the nations of the world that the American Constitution is derived from Muslim law. I also know civilization's debt to Islam. It was Islam that carried the light of learning through so many centuries, paving the way for Europe's renaissance and enlightenment. It was innovation in Muslim communities that developed the order of algebra, our magnetic compass and tools of navigation, our mastery of pens and printing, our understanding of how disease spreads and how it can be healed. Islamic culture has given us majestic arches and soaring spires, timeless poetry and cherished music. And throughout history, Islam has demonstrated through words and deeds the possibilities of religious tolerance and racial equality. I also know that Islam has always been a part of America's story. The first nation to recognize my country was Morocco. In signing the Treaty of Tripoli in 1796, and when the first Muslim American was recently elected to Congress, he took the oath to defend our Constitution using the same Holy Quran that one of our founding fathers, Thomas Jefferson, kept in his personal library. One of the first issues with the Asiatics here is that they don't know that they're standing on Africa. The concept that has been promoted is that that's Africa alone. Everybody in the world, particularly in any secret society, Skull and Bones, any of your Shriner, Masons, ETC, GAR, Daughters of the American Revolution, Knights Columbus, Knights Templar, Knights of Malta, ETC, all of them know that the land is Morocco. Mm -hmm. That the United States is a corporation company, military arm for the Spanish Inquisition against the Moors and Yahudi, mispronounced as Jew, both of which is you. Mm -hmm. That's the foundation of the entire world's politics. If anybody's talking to you about bringing remedy to you economically and politically, and don't give you the foundation of the real politics of the world is only playing with you. It's not personal, let's deal with reality. If you want to fix things, you gotta deal with facts. You cannot deal with emotions, how you feel, biases, who you like, who you don't like, etc. Take all that stuff, throw it out the door. Just deal with facts, because only truth is gonna solve things, are we clear? And the purity of your heart will Determine your connection to the electrical grid that's by nature on the planet for every living species. We have been disconnected. Mm -hmm. People have called it a lack of spiritual connection. It's because the masses don't get spirituality. You understand that? Spirit and spirituality means breath and the art of breathing and nothing else. And all priests know that. Spirit and spirituality is breath, the art of breath, 
learning to breathe to prepare your cells to receive the electrical charges from the Akashic records that exist in nature that connects you to the higher mind, which is religion. Only the imams, the rabbis, the rabbinate, the reverends, the PhDs, all of our PhDs, and every last one of them are Gnostics. So don't get it twisted and don't get biased because I belong to this club or you belong to that club. It's a game for the masses. The masses have never been given religion. Don't take it from an insulting perspective. It's just the truth. That's why you're in trouble. Can't solve problems because you don't have any cure. But the people are taught self-righteousness so that they can feel and project that they're doing something good for God, Jesus, Allah, Moses, Muhammad. And their babies are dying younger and younger on the streets. Their families are falling apart. The IRS is taking everything they own and they're lying to their children talking about how safe they are. However, the world sees us for the hypocrites that we actually are. But we've polished that very well. And so we have this self-righteousness with us that blocks information. So when facts contradict our beliefs, we reject the facts and start re-examining our position to see maybe we're wrong, maybe stuff doesn't work for us because we're wrong. Oh, we can't be that because we're saved and nobody else is. Mm -hmm. Of course, the rest of the civilized world doesn't have time for that, so they continue to make progress, even in hard times while we um, suffer all the economic, social, political destruction that we suffer. Please write this down. Do this as a reference for research, ETC, because our purpose is to bring effect, not to feed your emotions. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. The Spanish Inquisition is the foundation of the entire modern world's politics, and every politician knows it, every reverend knows it, every shriner knows it, Every master mason knows it. Every member of Skull and Bones, Keiko's Ku Klux Klan, Knights of Malta, Daughters of American Revolution, Daughters of ISIS. Why do they know it? Because they belong to the secret societies to get the truth that's held from the masses. And so they tell you it's devil worship so that you don't examine and recognize that the people who've been leading you is actually the vampires. So it's a very uncomfortable situation. Do you understand? Because the very people you've trusted have been pulling you into the pit. Enforcement of the Spanish Inquisition is the Secret Treaty of Verona. Secret Treaty of Verona. You can find that in your congressional records because most of the so called leader guys are paid not to talk about this. They're paid to present to you all uh, human beings are colors. And my light skinned, orange skinned black uncle <coughs> and my Negro aunt. You know, um, that's incompetence. Human beings have nationalities all over the planet. 
Those are brand systems set up by Dutch masters to make such persons that accept them in law non-descendable. Write that down. Non-descendable. Which is the function, mind you, of the brand system. Not that the Europeans were just being nasty guys, you know, they didn't want to know black history. Well, black history is their history. That's for Asiatics and Africans who fell, distinguished from civilized people who still honor their mothers and their fathers. You'll see, never see a civilized person come from Nigeria, Kibalan, any of the nation states talking about their light skinned, orange skinned black people. They will honor their mothers and fathers and be protected under international law like civilized beings are supposed to be. As soon as you see people walking around talking about black and white, they're entering the code system of the Christian black codes, which was set up in 1724 after they closed up. No, that was adopted after uh, uh, James's speech for the Popes of Rome. That's the beginning of the European hegemony on the North Gate. This is why persons in your secret societies in your highest degrees refer to themselves as the keepers of the North Gate. That's the cosmological name for Turtle Island, or what you know as North America, land of the Moors, the land of Nod. And everybody knows it but you. Do you understand? And when you think that your so-called black leaders don't have this information just because they don't talk about it, don't hold your breath, because they do. But it doesn't generate finance. It's a game. And they've all been playing it on you. Take it or leave it, that's the fact. Because they've poisoned the food. They've given most of you dead pledges, because most people don't know that mortgage means dead pledge. Contract is dead and you're the pledge. That's what it means. And understand, those systems did not come in to force until 19 and 13, after Skull and Bones Woodrow Wilson sold the government to, under the secret treaty of Verona, that you have right there, to representatives of England for the Popes of Rome to sell what they had conquered. Finally, the last of the generations that had any inkling of consciousness of their bloodline. And they met on Jekyll Island off the coast of Georgia. And under the secret treaty of Verona, all the Christian nations, representatives, agreed to not contradict each other. And they split up more of your estate. Keep in mind, 1884, 1885, with the Berlin Conference was that first major meeting of the Christian nations. How many of you know that the 1040 form comes under that secret treaty of Verona and everything that you give according to the entry of the age of Aries, or what you call the season of Aries, to the east, that you call east star, stars now in the east, that um, 40% goes to the Queen of England, and the other 60% goes to the Popes of Rome. Not a penny goes to your children. How many people know that that's a tribute under the secret treaty of Verona? And how come your leader guys haven't told you all that? Why you're so poor? Why you're being drained? Why do they want to discuss these things? Why do they want to say, well, we gotta make somebody like our complexion? Yeah. No, how about getting them out your pockets? Yeah. How about that? Mm -hmm. uh, is that so hard? Um, secret Treaty of Verona. To enforce that Secret Treaty of Verona, they have what is known as the Doctrine of Discovery. Write that down. These are sequential. This is so that you can do some research for those, because you'll have many people who don't have interest in this information will try to tell you that that's devil talk. That's Illuminati. People get glassy eyed and maintain their own servitude. You should not fear knowledge. For the people are destroyed by a day, by the day, for lack of it. After that, deal with um, the creation of the corpse via the 14th Amendment 
1868 after they closed the Freedmen's Bureau, where they were supposed to nationalize you, give you back your names, your nationality, your religion, your history, and, and, and the U.S. Corporation, <clears throat> Pacific India Company, all the rest of them, which is really what the U.S. really is, was supposed to fund all of the people of the land because you didn't come from someplace else, you're home. Mm -hmm. And this is not India, and we ain't engines. Mm -hmm. 40 acres and a mule, and a building, and support systems, etc. And logically, they weren't having that, that's why they bumped Lincoln off, and they did the Emancipation Proclamation, which was a false document that transferred the Christian stock to the Congress of the United States Corporation and registered them as cattle property in the state of Delaware. They're all stock. Anybody called Negro, black, or color, African, or whatever they call themselves this week, who are really of Moorish descent but deny their bloodline, um, are listed as Christian property. And don't think religion because it's politics. Do you understand? When people when you go into the communities and people are talking about Islam, Christianity, Buddhism, they're thinking in their mind spirituality. Politicians know that that's not true. It's all politics, y'all. Do you understand? Yeah. So when they're talking Muslim, Christian, they're talking politics, war, and economics. They're not talking some worship of God, Jesus, Allah, Moses, Muhammad, Yahweh. No, they're not. That's for the masses. That keep the masses busy and out of the hair of the rulers. That's why the masses keep losing. Mm -hmm. And after this 14th Amendment creation of the corpse, you have, say, um, the Buck Act. So write these down. These are research points for you. And also Trading with the Enemy Act. All of these, including DHS, Department of Homeland Security, are all derivative of the Spanish Inquisition. Different names for different times, same policy. Ron Emanuel Jew, one of the first things he issued from his desk was a proclamation telling the real history of the North Gate. You know, too many people weren't too happy about that. Because you gotta remember, anybody in a position of power is a Mason, that's number one. You know, when you're looking at Skull and Bones, Knights Columbus, Knights Templar, the Vatican, all of it is masonry. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Masonry is mother and son. That means every man has a belly button. Every man came from a mother. Mm -hmm. To study the planet Earth, you must know the mother to know the son. Because even her sons were once herself, and they were all female eggs. Mm -hmm. So the study of masonry is a study of the human condition on the planet Earth. It's ma, son, and the study of rape, masonry. Masonry is essentially Islam, the science, not Islam, the creed. There's, there's two different distinctions, do you understand? It deals with I, self, law, and master. It is man knowing himself, and it's ancient on the planet. Keep in mind, um, a lot of you middle-class Europeans um, now, as you all know, have started a lot of sovereignty groups. Yeah. And the reason they have started these sovereignty groups is first of all, keep in mind that they have been falsely claiming to be Americans. They're not, we're the Americans, all right? Because it is we who went out of a job two months or we go into the army for Rome, go to and fro the earth devouring nations to keep Rome in power, then come back and start some nigger group marching and praying about some rights that ain't going to happen. That's why nobody likes black people. Black is a brand for people of Moorish Canaanite descent who fell to the lowest depths of civilization. That's how you can tell them from other civilized people. Now, I'm going to show you very basically how most of us have been miseducated quite easily, mm -hmm. right? By letting, rather than convince you, or to try to convince you, I'll have you read it, mm -hmm. all right? So now, she's going to a dictionary, she's gonna read black, to all the adults and the children who must compete in this world. Black, blacker, blackest. Abbreviation, I guess, that stands for. Mm -hmm. BL, BLK. Mm -hmm. 
Number one, being of the darkest a chromatic visual value. Now, stop. Down. Now, a scholar would automatically recognize the flaw. Mm -hmm. A grammatic, a, 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 a one um, who understands orthology would immediately recognize that she violated. Mm -hmm. But I know it's because of the training. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, I want you to do it again. Speak louder okay. in the camera, because remember that you're making history. Right. All right, go ahead. Black. Adjective. Now you're talking. First rule in linguistics, this is all around the world, is that you must place the word in its proper matrix, which means womb or part of speech, its mother, its etymon. When you violate that rule, you're already considered either uneducated or incompetent, combination of the two. Mm -hmm. One of the things that our people always do is that they go past the matrix. Mm -hmm. And not knowing that connotative linguistics, write this down, connotative linguistics was introduced by the order of the bishopric to dumb people down. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. Distinguished from that which is proper, which is denotative, Linguistics. Are we clear? So we have opposing forces in linguistic dispensation. All right? This is why automatically, almost automatically, she went past the part of speech. So third grade, right? So we have a third grader here, and we have a third grader, and we say, well, little sis, um, what's an adjective? And the child will say, hmm. An adjective is a modifier. It modifies and it can be used to modify a noun. However, it can never be a noun. It is not a person, place, thing, or idea. Therefore, if it's applied to humans, it's for some social engineering purpose, apparently, without going any further. That's the distinction between people who can read and people who can not read. They ignore the matrix and therefore immediately go into the linear entries without question and can't distinguish the wheat from the chafe. Mm -hmm. Do not know the connotative linguistics from the denotative linguistics. And it will immediately start casting a spell. Okay. Read. Mm. Black. Adjective. Blacker. Blackest. Abbreviation. D-L. D-L-K. Number one. Being of the darkest aromatic visual value, producing or reflecting comparatively little light and having no dominant, predominant hue. Number two, having no light whatsoever. A black cave, belonging to an ethnic group having dark skin, especially negroid. Four, dark in color or having parts that are dark in color. Used with animals and plant names. Black bass, black bitch, black perch. You know how they say, can you spell? So the master of the other language is used to cast spells. Continue to read. Watch them cast the spell. Soil, as from soot, evil, sinister, black deeds, cheerless and depressing, gloomy, angered, sullen, sometimes capital. Attended with disaster, calamitous, the stock market, crash on black. All right, you don't need to go any further. When you accept it, you've accepted the spell of the dark priesthood who created connotative linguistics. But they needed you to believe. So they bought off what you call Pharisees and Sadducees, mm. Lawyers and priests, mm. or a few pieces of uh, mm. coins called the Bible 1C3. Mm. Mm. And their job is to keep that black thing going 
making you think it means Afrocentricity. For the time, for the sake of time, right? Um, when you get a decent dictionary, it will have what you call morphology, or how words are transferred. When you go down, I'm going to cut through the chase. When you go down, you would go to the etymology, and the etymology would be what you call the square brackets. And it would have M-E, which means Middle English. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. These are things that you look for as a standard. Pay attention to this, babe, because this is how you're going to read, all right? Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Always look for the square brackets, and that's called the etymology. And then look at the letters, and it'll say M-E. Now for the children, so, so you can properly read, go to the appendix and you put a timeline on it. Mm. Are we clear? All scholars are trained to do that. And you will find that it's 1100 to 15. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. So now, if some scholar comes tells your baby, the ancient black gods of Egypt, you know they're lying. Wow. And you'll save your babies. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know that, you buy into it and take on the spell. Right, because the word does not go past 1100 on the planet called Earth. That's the difference between people who can read and people who cannot. Are we clear? We won't go any further, but I want you to go just beneath that, and I want you to recognize what you see as the word morphs. And remember, as we talked, right? As a compound word. All right, read what you see. That's in the dictionary. Understand? Go ahead. Continue. Black. Or more. Now, is that two words or is that one word? Three, 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 three. Expressive structure. Mm -hmm. Black dot a dot more. Mm -hmm. All right, read. Noun. Noun. So that means a person, place, thing, or idea, right? Mm -hmm. All right, now continue to read. Any dark skinned person, especially an African Negro, mm -hmm. earlier black more. And then they separate the black, don't they? Yeah, they and it's all an even case, isn't it? Correct. And the more is capitalized, isn't it? Correct. Grammatical correction. So which one is the identity of these people who think they're black and Negroes? Is it in the dictionary? Yeah. Why is it an issue with these people that continue to claim to be somebody that they're not before the civilized world get rejected and accuse the civilized world of racism when race is the human species? Which means they not only can't read, they only know what things mean. Mm -hmm. So in the world, they're called wars of the state or totally incompetent mm -hmm. and are rejected. Mm -hmm. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. Because you must honor your mothers and fathers that your days are recognized by the rest of the nations to be longer or lengthened on the planet Earth, even to be descendable. Mm -hmm. Dred Scott case, most important slave case ever come before the Supreme Court of the United States Come to some court talking about freedom and liberty, claim to be Dred Scott. Mm -hmm. He's of Asiatic African descent. Can't happen. Plaintiff in error. Scholars keep talking racism. Plaintiff in error. Mm -hmm. Point is that we must start taking responsibility. Yep. And while the European has done much injury to our people, we have a responsibility to the honor of our mothers and fathers also. Are mm -hmm. we clear? Mm -hmm. So it's in the dictionary, isn't it? earlier mm -hmm. form of more. So now we're out to lunch, you see? Now you understand why they murdered Malcolm when he found out? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because my club members already knew this stuff. Yeah. Just like you seen Elijah Muhammad with his fez on earlier. He was an addict. Brother Khalid, as soon as he started telling these people they're Moors, all of a sudden he had a seizure in the hotel room? No. Mm -hmm. It's go and tell for all operations. Mm -hmm. Because you are the heirs to the world's largest estate and don't know it. Mm -hmm. This is what your black leaders ain't telling you. You're not the poorest people, you're the richest people. You've just been under European colonial operations mm -hmm. and you forgot your bloodline. Mm -hmm. This is your bloodline. This is your inherited right. Mm -hmm. And every one of your leaders have this information. Mm -hmm. How many people know that the rest of the civilized world with their um, special committee of 24 for decolonization has charged all the churches and civics groups to dispense this information that I'm talking to you right now? How many of you are aware of that? Mm -hmm. It's called the rights of indigenous people. That's world governments 
have come together for you all and play your nationality, and yet it is not being distributed in your neighborhood, but yeah, everybody's come here talking black stuff. Mm-hmm. That keeps you in the dead state mm-hmm. of the economic suppression and the poisonous foods and everything else that they're dealing on you from the Spanish Inquisition. Because the people are not aware of what's really going on. Ignorance is dangerous. And so your language reflects to the world where you are. You understand? I'll give you an example. When Il Malik made the Hajj, he went over there, that black and white stuff. It was a French Muslim that schooled him. So because you made the Hajj, you ain't visiting home, you left home. But don't come here with that black and white stuff. That's that slave language in America. That doesn't go in the civilized world. That's the Maghrib. Maghrib. Morocco, the most extreme West. The great Masonic secret. So logically, when Malcolm came back, he already knew the enemy was on both sides. Because everybody knew it but him. And they had him out there having his neck out talking black, not knowing that he was denying his own right. And it took a French Muslim to school him. Then he came back here and what? His own brothers with Europeans assassinated him. Because they knew he was going to tell him. You know how they say the best way to hide things from people? <laughs> that, that's why they chopped off the nose. <laughs> now, I want you to look at They want you to know it. Give me a chance for that. Now look on the back. Look on the back of the seal. Right? And you have two seals, don't you? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Look on the back. Now, someone read under the first seal. What does it say at the very bottom underneath the seal? Under the first seal. Say it out loud. The great seal. Now, again, we're thinking third grade grammatication, right? Read what's under the second seal. So, for a third grader, what part of speech is the word of? Preposition. A preposition is what? A substantive connector, which means those two seals are one. And as a matter of fact, they write on there, O and E, right in your face. So how many of you know that the United States has a dual seal, but yet you handle this every day? Now, if you'll notice, under the flying bird, right, you will see the president, the secretary of state, the secretary of treasury, all the politicians speak under the flying bird. How come none of them speak under the great seal, which is apparently clearly there? That's the great seal. How come nobody speaks under it? Because the heirs are to be kept asleep. Now, if you'll notice over the bird's head, you'll see hex alpha. With 13 stars. Hex Alpha is the insignia of the ancient Canaanite Moabite nation. They sometimes call us Yahudi because we crossed the river. It's not a religion, it's what we did. Do you understand? We're Moors, I'm Anya and Yimwil. People of the land, and we're not Indians either. And this is not India. Remember, how did we become called Indians? When the Romans tried to take over the trade routes of the Moors, on Calpe, Tariq had an army. And we had a fort there for them close to a thousand years. That's called Gibra Atariq, the mountain of Tariq. Some people say the rock of Gibraltar. And so they wanted to go around the Cape. 
Now, Pedro de Moore, do some research in your European schools because you ain't going to get it here. <coughs> you got to deal with people outside of this, these shores. What's the spelling of the last name? Pedro de Moore navigated the Nino for Colombo, Christopher Colombo, who was working under the Inquisition for Ferdinand and Isabella. And understand at that time, Cuba was called Isabella. So they attacked us from the south. Mm -hmm. So you do understand. There's a lot more history, you know, that we could go into about Isabella too. But just giving you some keys. Now Isabella and Ferdinand merged their kingdoms, and for Christendom defeated us. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. That has much to do with the Portuguese, etc., dealing with taking brothers and sisters from the islands actually to England, not actually reverse. They got people thinking they went to Africa on that side and brought people over here. No, they were taking them from here over there. Mm. And they pretty much wiped out um, um, Boricane. Boricane, you refer to as Puerto Rico. Mm. And so they had to take the families from uh, surrounding islands to repopulate. And so when you see some of your other brothers and sisters of different complexions, don't get it twisted. They're Moors. That's your family. Do you understand? Same thing with the Philippines. They're Moros. You've got to understand the operations of European colonial operations on the planet is the defeat of the Moors, which is you. That's what your treatment, mistreatment is all about. You've got to know the real history so that you can have a mental concept on how to overcome this for the coming generations. You cannot overcome this with false information. You understand? Your false information gives them what is called mandate. As long as you don't deal with the truth, it gives them mandate. Are we clear? All right, so understanding that every person in position of authority and power is given degrees of this knowledge in masonry, like, to, like you'll see in, I'll say, maybe the last 50 years or so, in some of the orders they started the story about Hiram Abiff, the great architect, and you're buried in the dark, dark north. And then they'll have um, the, um, that mosque in Philadelphia, which is City Hall. If you look at his design, it's like a mosque. Mm -hmm. Four gates, parapet on the north, and they got Willie Penn standing 23.5 degrees facing east by northeast to the Masonic Lodge, one North Broad Street, and that's where they stopped them, the Masonic Parade. And the cornerstone is not outside, it's in a grave pit, mm -hmm. right inside the dark north. And then you have these Asiatics holding up the pillars of Atlas. Mm -hmm. Rockwell, you gotta get on understanding, you see? Mm -hmm. The empire is what Georgie was talking about. Mm -hmm. That's where you're standing. That's why he had to take his oath, do some research on Day Street in New York. D-E-Y. Mm -hmm. And then he had to come to Philadelphia and take his oath mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. And Philadelphia was the Capitolium. Then under Pike, they moved it to Washington to the Seven Hills. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. And so all, and that's why like Daughters of American Re of Revolution, of which Hillary is one, D-A-R, that's the uh, manual that is designed for citizenship and is used as a pattern around the world. And of course, you have to have a knowledge of the real culture to pass that test. And that's what they do, naturalization. People have green cards. Yeah. Why, you don't have a green card. And so um, understand what the world knows about you and why you see um, that when you have Asiatics come from other countries, they don't show you their passports, because they will have on their passport white, white man. And they know immediately we start getting anti-Christ. Hey, yeah, I want to be black like a brother. And we start. <laughs> we do. No, you don't want to be black. You're trying to act like the white man, because they are white men. Mm -hmm. 
It's a legal status. Free white persons. Free white persons, quote unquote, <coughs> referred to in Naturalization Act, so you must know the history, you must know Naturalization Act, distinguished from nationalization. All right? As amended by Act July the 14th, 1870, Knights of Columbus, Ku Klux Klan, 1854, 1865, when the Europeans took on the title of white with the Wigamore Party. They used to wear wigs to imitate the Moors. They called the Wigamore Party. Now they become the White Party, and they took on the title of white that belonged to you. That's what playing is all about. Even the uniform that they use belong to you. Oh, scared of that! <laughs> Them uniforms are thousands of years old. Anyway, Further in Life Naturalization Act, as amended by Act July 14, 1870, has meaning naturally given to it. When first used in one statute, 103C3, meaning all persons belonging to the European races then commonly counted as white, and their descendants, including such descendants in other countries to which they have immigrated. That's the general perception, and that's what they've taken it down. <coughs> and this is what it means in law. Free white persons includes all European Jews more or less intermixed with peoples of Celtic, Scandinavian, Teutonic, Iberian, Latin, Greek, and Slavic descent. If they're not mixed, they can't be free white people. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? They've got to have Asiatic blood. Mm -hmm. Now, Free white persons includes Magyars, Laps and Finns, and the Basque and Albani Albanians. Includes Laps, Finns, pardon me, the Basque and Albanians. Free white persons includes the mixed Latin, Celtic, Iberian, and Moorish inhabitants of Spain and Portugal. The mixed Greek, Latin, Phoenician, and North African inhabitants of Sicily. And the mixed Slav and Tartar inhabitants of South Russia. Read this together, you all. Free white persons, it does not mean Caucasian race. Repeat it, y'all. It does not mean Caucasian race, Aryan race, or Indo-European races, nor the mixed Indo-European Dravidian, Semitic, or Mongolian peoples who inhabit Persia. A Syrian of Asiatic birth and descent will not be entitled to become a naturalized citizen of the United States as being a free white person in multiple law cases. So you can see that your leaders have been miseducating you. And it's not accidental. It's called a few pieces of silver. Judas factor. And until you get knowledge, you wouldn't believe it. That's what's called the great Masonic secret. You.